Hello there. Welcome to this week's concept map presentation. My name is Dr. Dimple Hinduja. I'm one of the Trustgate CT1 at NUH Hospitals. Today we will be briefly covering the multiple pathology of lower back pain. Back pain can affect up to 80% of the general population at some time during their life. The differential diagnosis of back pain are shown in the figure according to their anatomy. As you can see, feel free to pause this video at any point and see the concept map in detail. Let's move on. There are some other differentials as well, such as facet joint arthritis, prolapsed intervertebral disc, annular tear of intervertebral disc, spondylosis, or spondylolisthesis can be spinal stenosis as well. Some of the back pain might be simple mechanical cause. However, the approach to a patient with back pain is to rule out serious causes first. Here is how we approach. Look for any vascular cause. Look for the gender of the patient, male or female age more than 65, has the patient got abdominal pain or has the patient collapsed? If the answer to these questions is yes, then think about abdom abdominal aortic aneurysm or AAA. Most importantly, we must do abdominal examination to exclude AAA. We can also think about renal calculus or retroperitoneal bowel perforation when we deal with back pain. If you're thinking about renal calculus, do a urine analysis. Let's move on to next differential. If the answer to these questions is no, then you will check if the patient's got urinary retention. Has the patient got incontinence of urine? Is there any dribbling of urine or any saddle area numbness? If the answer is yes, then you should think about quarter equina. We are just not asking questions from a template, but actually using open or closed questions to find out a patient has saddle anesthesia, urinary retention, or incontinence to exclude or confirm quarter equina. If so, check pre and post voidal bladder scan and perform per digital rectal examination to check an sphincter tone and saddle area sensations. Say that your patient didn't have this symptom either, then we will have more targeted history of sciatica, that is back pain, leg pain, or neurological pain. If yes, then patient more likely has sciatica or herniated disc. The patient may have pain in back, but this is not usually as bad the pain in your bottom, legs, or feet. More likely shooting pain may also feel numb, weakness, pins, and needles. If you have back pain only, it's probably not sciatica. Let's move on to next differential. Has the patient got history of cancer? Has he or she got unexplained weight loss? Yes, then your patient likely has vertebral metastasis. We need to weigh our differential of bone primary and secondary meds by asking history of cancer and unexplained weight loss. Let's say your patient doesn't have the symptoms either. Then what? We need to find out has the patient got history of trauma, injury, or if they have risk factors for osteoporosis. Pressure from normal activity can cause osteoporosis, compression fracture.
after ruling out all this, your answers were no to about. Then you will look for, has your patient got temperature? Have they got history of IV drug abuse? Or they're immunocompromised? Have they got any history of skin infection or instrumentation? Yes, then probably it is spinal epidural abscess or vertebral osteomyelitis. You should check for blood culture in this case, CRP and white cell count, in short, inflammatory markers to rule out abscess. If the patient is older, thigh pain might be because of spinal stenosis or vascular cause. If the patient has got wide base case, thigh pain, or the patient is older, then we will think about spinal stenosis, like I said, and also peripheral arterial disease. What we must do in this case is do ABPI and vascular examination to look for peripheral arterial disease. Ask specific questions for intermittent qualification and night pain. Red flag symptoms indication possible serious spinal pathology are onset at age less than 20 or more than 50, thoracic pain, previous history of carcinoma, steroids or HIV infection, night sweat, weight loss, widespread neurological symptoms, especially sphincter difference or disturbance, structural spinal deformity and non-mechanical pain, especially if constant and worsening pain at night. Only after excluding all these, we can assume mechanical low back pain. So this is how we approach if the patient presents with back pain. Start by thinking of all the possible causes and then categorizing the differential diagnosis. With thorough history and clinical findings from examining our patient, we can then conclude the most likely cause of illness and proceed with management. This is a summary of the entire presentation to look for all these causes and then think about The presentation's purpose is to guide your thinking process when you encounter a patient experiencing back pain. This presentation is not meant to be a tool that you use to diagnose your patients with. You will need to exercise clinical judgment and consider the clinical context of your patient's presentation to make an accurate diagnosis. So this is all about back pain approach. We've made the following references to make this presentation. Always, always remember to create your own concept map for different symptoms. In a nutshell, thinking about your thinking, that is double check to identify or rule out life-threatening causes first. You can again pause this video at different stages of the concept map to see in detail. Thank you.